Hello and welcome to Mead Week. Hundreds of thousands of federal employees returned to work this week, including thousands right here on Fort Meade. 16 days of government shutdown, however, didn't prevent continued construction on several major projects on post. Commuters were treated to a whole new configuration of the Mapes Road and Cooper Avenue intersection. Additional turn lanes have been added as well as new lights. Work is still going on, however, with completion expected before the start of winter. More construction updates in a moment. Hello, I'm Brian Spann. Also on this edition, we check in with ACS during Domestic Violence Awareness Month and news from the Substance Abuse Program. These stories and more, but first, as I mentioned before, major construction projects continue apace here in Fort Meade. Right next to the Cooper Mapes intersection, the Corvius Group's Reese Crossings project is moving towards a springtime opening. The new Exchange Mall has added walls and a roof in recent weeks. AFI's officials estimate an August 2014 completion date for that huge facility. Meanwhile, the new shopette, or as the Exchange calls it, the Gate 32 Express, will feature an Arby's and pizza delivery service. The Express is scheduled to open in February. In other news, October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Last year, I spoke with some members of the Family Advocacy Program at Army Community Service. These three ladies shared some personal experiences, as well as how Army Community Service can help. But domestic violence does come in many forms, and people do tend to think that domestic violence is only physical. It's only when you see bruises, but of course, there's other forms of domestic violence. There's emotional abuse, there's verbal abuse, uh, which really cuts thicker than a knife. Uh, because the, the scars heal, although we don't want to minimize that, they're true, they're real, uh, but they heal, but the emotional abuse is something that is almost always there. The uh, bruises go away, but that emotional abuse, it can carry you from, maybe it may have started in your, in your childhood with your parents, and you weren't able to identify it as a child, and now you're an adult, and you're identifying this, you're dealing with this emotional abuse, and you're not quite sure how to put a label on it. We can help you identify that and provide you coping skills and tools to work through that. You're not alone uh, in uh, try to find someone that you trust that can be a great listener. That's really important that you build a trust with someone and be able to get your story out. That's like the first major step. I am very grateful for that many years ago when I was not only going through a um, <clears throat> mental emotional and eventually physical uh, uh, abusive relationship where I almost lost my life. I'm very grateful for someone who stepped up to the plate because as we've heard many times, it's not just uh, your problem, my problem, it's a community problem. Someone that I didn't know that saw this going on and reached out to help and they didn't give up because I didn't give in to the help immediately, but they didn't give up. And they took me to, of all places, ACS, Army Community Service, <laughs> uh, for some help. And that was my first ray of light in this situation. And yes, I was bruised, but the bruises on the inside were way more damaging to me than any physical bruise that I received. So we want people to know that, you know, we are here to support them, we are here to, you know, assist in whatever area they need. Once they leave these doors, after we have sat with them and done the safety plan, we're always following up with them, making sure that they're okay. We have a 24-hour hotline in which they can use, and if they need to call us to talk at 2 o'clock in the morning, we are available for them. Elsewhere, the Army's Substance Abuse Program is sponsoring a Red Ribbon Week program at McGill Training Center on Tuesday, October 22nd from 11.30 to 1.00. In 1985, in response to the murder of drug enforcement agent Enrique Camarena, people in communities around the world began wearing red ribbons as a symbol of their dedication to the fight against drug abuse. Once again, the Red Ribbon Program is Tuesday at McGill Training Center starting at 11.30. In a related story, the Substance Abuse Office is sponsoring Fort Meade's Community Prescription Drug Take Back Day. It's scheduled for Saturday, October 26th from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. in front of the Post Exchange. The National Drug Prescription Take Back Day represents an effort to raise awareness about the dangers of prescription drug abuse. For more information, you can contact the Substance Abuse Program at ACS. One reminder, you should remove all identifying personal information from any medicine bottles or containers that you turn in. And finally, on this edition, Club Mead and DFMWR invite you to November's Right Arm Night. It's open to all services and ranks, civilian and military. Units should reserve tables. You can call 301-677-6969. And that's our report for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead week.